Hello everyone. Welcome to studygan.com. So today we are going to learn how we, how we can build a machine learning model to develop a sonar based system to predict rocks or mines. So we are going to cover this video in five different steps that are step 1 importing the data set, then data exploration, then train test split and after that training the model and testing the model. So let's get started. So the step one is importing the data set. So first we need to import the necessary libraries and then we are going to import the CSV file sonar all data dot CSV. So this uh, CSV file is taken from carol.com and the link for the data set would be provided to you guys in the description box. And we have used the read CSV functionality of pandas library to import the CSV file. And now let's give a look at our data frame and we can see that we have 61 columns uh, with 60 columns of different frequencies and one column label that is the most crucial column in our data set. So this label column basically uh, denotes that if the object is rock or mine, if it is rock, it is denoted by the letter R and if it is mine, it is denoted by the letter M. So now let's go to the next step. The step two is data exploration. And to find more about the data, first we need to find the correlation of the data set. And before that, we can see that the label column here is a categorical column with the categories rock and mines. So first we need to encode this. So we are going to do this by this line of code. Here we are mapping rock as 0 and mine as 1 using dot map and converting the data type of label column to float64 using dot as type. And after that we are going to find the correlation of the data set. And here is the correlation for the data set. And now we are going to plot this correlation using a heat map. So this is the heat map for the correlation of the data set. We have used the dot heat map from Seaborn library and plotted the correlation for the data frame. And here more red is more correlated while more blue is less correlated. So we can see this straight line which is basically signifying that all the features that all the frequencies are fully correlated to themselves but these red regions here around the straight line basically depicts that the neighboring frequencies are somewhere correlated to each other which means that the frequencies 1, 3 and 5 are somewhere correlated to each other while the frequencies 53, 55, 57 are also somewhere correlated to each other. And now we are going to find out the top 5 features most positively correlated to the label column. And we can see that the frequencies 45, 10, 49, 12 and 11 are the most positively correlated to the label column. And let's find out the top 5 frequencies that are most negatively correlated to the label column. So we can see that the frequencies 36, 35, 37, 34 and 31 are most negatively correlated to the label column. So now we can uh, move to the next step. And the next step is train test split. So first we are going to import train test split from sklearn.model selection and after that we are going to uh, select our features and labels. So our feature is the entire data set except the label column. So that is the 60 frequency columns and our label y is equal to the label column of our data frame. And after that we are going to use the train test split 
and we are going to pass the parameter x that is our features and y that is our label and the test size equal to 0.1 which denotes that only 10% of the data set is for testing while 90% of the data set is for training and here x train is our feature for training and x test is feature for testing while y train is label for training and y test are label for testing so let's move to the next step the next step is training the model so we are going to import standard scaler from sklearn.preprocessing so standard scaler is basically used to standardize our features and then we are going to create an instance named scaler for the standard scaler and after that in the next line of code we are going to import k neighbors classifier that is a supervised machine learning algorithm used to perform classification task and it classifies uh, a new data point using the labels of k nearest data points so to understand it more properly we can see a visual representation of knn algorithm so here we want to find the category of the new data point and suppose the k is equal to 5 so we are going to see the nearest 5 neighbors of this new data point and 3 out of them that is the majority of them are belonging to the category 2 so we will assign the category 2 to this new data point so this is how knn algorithm works and now we are going to create an instance for the knn algorithm uh, that is knn and after that we are going to import pipeline from sklearn.pipeline so pipeline is basically used to merge uh, multiple steps in a single workflow and here we are creating a list of tuples uh, name operations which will contain instance of a class and its name uh, so here it is uh, containing instance scalar and k neighbor classifier and their names which are scalar and knn and in the next line of code we are going to create an instance for the pipeline with the name pipe and it will contain the parameter operations and now we are going to import grid search cv from sklearn.model selection and in the next line we are going to create a list uh, named k values containing the values 1 to 29 and then we are going to define a parameter grid with the name param underscore grid uh, which is basically a dictionary used to define the hyperparameters and here we are only using one only one hyperparameter that is the knn underscore underscore n underscore neighbors which basically specifies the n neighbors in the knn algorithm and the k values is the list that contains the possible values for the n neighbors in the knn, KNN algorithm and in the next step we are going to basically create the final classifier uh, using the grid search cv and we are going to pass the parameters pipe and the parameter grid and the scoring equal to accuracy here basically means that we are going to select uh, the value for the hyperparameter in such a way that the accuracy of the machine learning model is maximized and now we are going to fit our model uh, with our training data that are features for training and the features for testing and now we have trained our model uh, trained the classifier uh, final classifier and now using the dot uh, best underscore params underscore we can find out the value that was selected during the grid search cv uh, to achieve the optimal performance and the value that was selected for the hyperparameter knn n neighbors was 1 so in this case in the knn algorithm we will only look for the first nearest neighbor so uh, we have fitted our model machine learning model with our training data so let's move on to the next step so the next step is testing our model so we are going to import classification report confusion matrix and accuracy score from sklearn.matrix and after that we are going to perform some predictions using our final classifier and we are going to predict the values for our testing data that is uh, features for testing and then we are going to uh, print a confusion matrix for our y test that is our label for testing and our predictions from our final classifier 
so here we can see that we have predicted the rocks seven time correctly and we have predicted the mines 12 time correctly so after that we are going to print the classification report for our model so here we can see that for the rocks the precision is 88 and the recall is also 88 percent while for the mines the precision and the recall is 92 percent each so we can say that the performance of the model is pretty good so this was all about the video so this was all about how we can build a machine learning model to train a sonar system to detect mines and rocks so we have kept this kept this machine learning model as simple as possible to make it more open-ended for you guys so you can manipulate the code in order to uh, attain and achieve uh, better performances for the machine learning model and you can also use other supervised machine learning algorithm for classification in order for in order to increase the model performance so this code will be provided to provided to you guys in the description box thanks for watching the video i hope to see you again